Okay, this is where we left off in part eight. Our catching character can move back and forth, and the collision detection is now working so he can catch the objects. And we have a scoreboard which gives us a point for each catch. And if we don't catch, we don't get a point. Now this is where we're going to end up. We need to finish our game now and make it a little more finished. So for the finished version, it's going to look like this. Notice that we'll have a lives dynamic text box here. And if I hit control enter, you can see we have a start screen. We have an instructions button and a play button. If I hit the instructions button, I get the instructions. If I hit the play button, the game starts. We've got three lives. If we miss a uh, cow head, we lose a life. Now there's a rattlesnake. If I get the rattlesnake, I lose a point. If I catch the colored head, I get five points. And for the white heads, I get one point. And if we lose, let's say, all our lives, game is over, and then we can play again. So this is where we want to end up. First thing that I'm going to do is this background text that I was using, uh, I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to delete this layer. And I'm going to select the top layer here where it says Actions, and I'm going to make a new layer by clicking this button right here. And this will be our Labels. Okay, and so we're going to need some frame labels. So 5, I'll put a keyframe here, F6, and this will be the Instructions label. Okay, hit Enter to make sure it takes. And then on 15, I'll put another keyframe, F6 on the keyboard to make the keyframe. This will be game on, hit enter, make sure it takes, you'll see the little red flag. And then on frame 25, I'm also going to put a keyframe, and this one will be game over. Now I like to see the frame label, the word, so on frame 35 here, I'll right click and insert a regular frame, and that way I can see the text running across. Now these actions that we have on keyframe one, this is all of our game code, basically. We're going to move this game code, so first I select it, and then I'm going to drag it over to the game on, underneath the game on keyframe where our frame label is. So when we jump to game on, that's where our game code will be. And in our game code, now that we're no longer on keyframe one, and there's only one frame in our movie, now we have this many frames in our movie, we're going to need to run a stop function at the beginning. So I'm going to go right to the beginning, move this down, and put a stop action, basically call stop function right there at the beginning so that our playhead will stop here. On the game start, we're also going to need a stop action here, here, and here. So we might as well do that now. So we'll go to the first keyframe now on the actions layer. Notice there's no actions in here, and we'll say stop. Now I can right click, copy the entire frame, and paste the frame, and I'll paste it here. So now we have a stop action here, and a stop action here, and a stop action here. Let's make our lives scoreboard. So I'm just going to highlight this regular text score, which is static text, and I'll highlight the dynamic text box, I'll highlight both of them, and copy and paste. And then we'll just drag these over here, let's say to the top, and we'll just change the name here. So this will be now lives. And the other one will highlight it, this dynamic text box. Notice it says score underscore txt. We'll change that to lives underscore txt. Now this is important, so you have to double check. When you select it, you want to verify the instance names are correct. And then what we'll do is we'll get a text box here. And I'm going to make a new text box here. Of course, I want it to be static text. Static text, and we'll change the size of the, the font and the size. This will we'll say cowboy catch. I'll drag this out, and this will be the game title for the start screen. Now, 
I'm going to change the font to a cowboy themed font. So I'll go down here and get Playbill and then raise up the font size, let's say, to something like that. Okay. Now, once you add a custom font like this into your game, what you want to do is select the text and I will embed the font into my movie. So I'm going to select that and embed all of the characters of the font Playbill into my movie. All right, now that we have that, we're also going to need a play button and an instructions button. So I'll go back to my text tool, my text tool first, and just I'll start by typing it. Play, and I'll change this font back to Arial. Size 21. And so there's a text box that says play for our play button. And we also need an instructions button. So I'll just copy and paste and then change this to the word instructions. And so now we have two text boxes. One for our, we have three text boxes. One for our title, one for our play button, and one for our instructions button. Now I can line up all of these things, but before I do that, I'm gonna convert these into buttons. So I will highlight this first button or this text box play and do a modify convert to symbol button we'll call it btn underscore start and click OK and then this one modify convert to symbol button make sure that the type is not a movie clip but you've changed it to a button I want to point that out you probably have it still set to movie clip Make sure you change it to button. All right, and this one, btn underscore instructions. And we'll click that and click OK. So now I have two buttons. When you highlight the symbol, it should say button up here in the property window. And so this one will highlight it, and I'll just give it the same name for an instance name, btn underscore start. And this one, I'll say btn underscore. For this one, I'll say rules, because that's just a little shorter than instructions. So now I have a play button, an instructions button, a title. So now that we have this, what I want to do is I want to put some keyframes here across. So when we go to the next keyframe here, F6, this will be where we give our instructions. So I will delete the title and I will delete the instructions button. Over here on game on, I'll hit F6, and over here we won't need the play button, so I'll delete that, so that when we get to the game on screen, we have the cowboy character and the scoreboards, but we don't have the buttons, we don't need that. And then on the game over screen, I'll hit F6 here to put a keyframe, or right click, insert keyframe. And on the game over screen here, what we're going to need is some text that says game over. So what I'll do is I'll copy this cowboy catch text, copy, and I'll go back here and I will paste it. And instead of cowboy catch, we'll just have it say, and if you want, you can collapse that a little. All right, so we've got the cowboy, the instructions, and here. Perfect. Now, if on the second keyframe, if I highlight this, you can see the instance name is still there. And when we get to the game over screen, we're also going to need a play again button. So we're going to need that. So I'll just do that really quickly. Arial, size 21, hit enter play again. Modify, convert to symbol, make sure it's a button, btn underscore play 
again. I'm going to give it the name btn underscore play again. Now for the instructions screen, I'll just copy my instructions from this other finished version that I had, and that'll make it nice and easy. Copy, and on the instructions screen, we'll just edit, paste in place, there's my instructions. So now I have the start screen, the instructions screen, the game screen, and the game over screen. And I have buttons in place that we're going to need. These are symbols, button symbols, that we're going to need to jump the playhead to and from the different screen, the different keyframes.